So uh, when I chose Donna as my influence, I forgot about the fact that she probably would come to this screening. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, this is a little hard. Um, but basically, one thing I wanted to tell you is that uh, before I ever read Donna's work, before I ever met her, I saw her across the uh, campus at CCA um, in Oakland. And she was wearing this amazing orange lipstick and black dress. And I was 22, and she was a grown up, you know, for real. And I just, I was just dazzled. I just thought she is so cool, and that's the kind of grown up I want to be. Um, from across, I knew it from you know 100 feet away. Uh, okay, and I could talk forever about what an amazing person Donna is. Uh, I have since taken her classes and um, learned just so much from reading the stories that she uh, has given us and also have been so influenced by her incredible encouragement over the years. Um, but what I really want to talk about is her work and how amazing it is. Her poems, I often actually teach them in my classes because um, they do so many amazing things at once. They tell stories and uh, do um, incredible things with sound and image and all of everything that we look to poetry for uh, is is in her poems. And then the other thing that always happens to me when I'm reading her poems is that um, I feel like I'm totally there. I'm total. I'm understanding what she's uh, putting down on the page, and then something happens that changes. Uh, my understanding of the words in the middle of the poem, and it blows my mind every time. Um, and so rather than talk on and on about how that happens, I'm going to read you a couple of her poems, and then I'll read you one of mine. Uh, we were strongly encouraged to generate new work for this reading, so I, I did do that. So this is very much a work in progress. Um, you can see I kind of tried to slash and burn on my way in the door. Um, but first, I'm going to read... This is uh, Donna's book, True Crime. Um, Saint Erasure is another of her books that you should also go out and get. <laughs> um, but it, okay, so the first one I'm gonna read is called House, the History of Us All. In the place where you live, the sky is white. In winter, stones blow up the shore. You grow up in your mother's house. In summer, the air is heavy, palpable. Sometimes it gets difficult to breathe. Vines cover trees, foam poles, deserted houses. You see them when you drive at night, depthless, spaces without trees or ground, shapes rising up against a dark screen. We make up what we cannot remember. We no longer recall what is true. Your mother, as a girl, lived across the road from ghosts. Your grandmother saved garbage, drew crosses over the walls of the house. One of your uncles is crazy. He is tall, thin, ugly in a pitiful way. He thinks people want to murder him, are making signs with their hands. At some point after your grandmother dies, the uncle lives alone in the house. You recall a car ride. Also, a bad afternoon when he backs one of the ants into a corner of the kitchen. Sometime later, relatives are informed that a group of people have begun to live with him in the house. It's bound not to end well. There's something about narcotics. The girls tell police he tries to touch them when they sleep. For months, these people return to and are removed from the grandmother's house. When they finally leave, they steal or wreck everything. Much later, you will make trips to gather the scraps from what little is left at the grandmother's house. You will pick up your uncle. You will drive into the country. Throughout the afternoon, he'll place his hand on your lower back, rubbing circles that arc wider and wider. You'll go to a cow pasture, once family burial ground. But once there, quickly realize you've made a mistake. The hill is overgrown. You can't read what's on the slabs. The uncle keeps pacing, wanting to go home. An electric fence keeps cows from trampling the stones that are left. 
but must have long ago fallen in on themselves. Your mother's house is brown, peels at the edges. Even in winter, the heat is weighty, visceral. Every morning, you wake to hear birds at the window, their voices muffled, flute-like, a language of children or lost people. It takes forever to believe that the dead are friendly. In winter, you think of your mother's house. You can bring back some rooms, the light at certain times of day, also a globe and an iron flower sitting side by side on the table. What you can't remember is how to get from one room to another, or the view from the windows, or where the doors were. And this one is called What They All Say. As the tree spreads out, fractures limb by limb across the sky, and the king slowly loses his mind down in Georgia, street lights split the dark, crack the overhanging stars. Windows across the street flare, then go blank. There is nothing out here but the untextured night, and we drink and drink and drink, and none of it is any help. All night long he will say, I don't understand, and I am here. Is this real? The fluorescence in the hall look to him like a sun in a huge, brutal sky, and he thinks of his dogs, and a graveyard in Hashtun. Cracked stones, marble bleached white and unbroken as souls, or an older one, deserted in the middle of a cow pasture. Pines. The dead forgetting themselves, molecule by molecule. And this night will go on and won't stop getting longer, and the king slowly loses his mind down in Georgia as the soul fractures limb by limb across the sky. He just wants it to be years. He just wants to be home. Hey. I don't know why I gotta read Donna's work first and then mine. That's a really a rough lineup. Um, like I said, this is a work in progress. In the place where we live, there are frames of brick and luck. There are slicks of spit and glue, of strung craft beads and swallowed flights. You drive us through Osseus, where the flies are thick on the lake, our tongues dry with dill and ketchup. We slick each other up in bathrooms with open windows, forgetting. Steel grapes from dry vines, barefoot and drunk, my dress transparent and slick, sour and skin in our teeth, the sky big, grape slick, path narrow, laugh, lick. I drive into sheaths of sequin, paper dresses, spiked wood. In this town where we'll live or won't live, Wood frames and pellet stoves and winter slick. Children, mist, I think of my infertility and feel lighter. You drive through the frames and choreograph bends and leg lifts, 5,059 legs lifting and spinning in frames, bare legs every color, 13 years of pornography. Who are we? In this town where we live, there are doorknobs and photos of our mouths, lips tight and then wider, teeth close and then closer, winter coats, sweat on the bridge of your nose in the Italian restaurant where we eat pasta with clams and worry about the future. We buy half of a six pack and walk up 39th and wonder what grapevine or maple, what makes us sleep, how can we be better? In the place where I live, I set tables and make scenes of real or fictional families. They argue and clink glasses of colored water, juice, unicorn horn, olives and hot sauce, table of stacked pomegranates, fake family, real family. Pretend we are always together. On 39th Street, pizza $1, horn and unicorn, I have to pee. You wave from across the street in the dark, I insist on noodles. Pretend we're telling stories. Upstate, kicked leaves, my mother coming up out of the ground. We look to our mothers and wonder, pretend we don't speak. 
Sweat behind my knees, where to find breakfast? How much do we have? Open palms and show the coins there. My grandmother coming up out of the ground, pretend we don't speak the language. Her frozen kitchen, naked in her big red coat. My grandmother at 18, at 25, at 85, in September, just before she died. Sweating and turning in her purple shirt, she said, I've got a lot of moves. <laughs> How she never stopped dancing, rushed by soldiers, scared and looking forward, even that last day, looking forward. Our plans are impossibly large. Our loves are impossibly various and stacked, framed in brick and wood, 28 per second. It's almost cathedral, almost now. Forget who is listening and leave the windows open and wear transparent clothing. We are magazine beautiful. We're California beautiful and the sky over 39th Street turns foggy. Try not to notice luck because jinx and the sign of the doorknob and all of the other signs. You're naked and I want you. Sheaves of paper and sequin, kicked maple and the sun setting or rising. Which coast? Look far away in a photograph. Maple sugar, $9. Let's show INS how real we are. <laughs> Without the dirty money, who will we be? Smile for immigration. We're careful to do things for ourselves. You drive. We're careful. We're careful to be hungry. To love words like lousy and chamomile and slick, grape slick. Count 30th floor on 39th street and hungry up the block and naked and luck and then we'll give it all back. Make an adventure with our brains and dirty luck. And let's not be afraid. Let's not be afraid. Let's not, let's not, let's never, let's never be afraid.